Well, hello, White Sox fans, and welcome to another edition of White Sox Daily Live. My name is Ian Eskridge. I am joined by my co-host, the Danny Miller. How are you doing, Danny? Uh, you know, hanging in there. Uh, not really much else to say, man. I'm watching the uh, the White Sox win tonight, so that's a good thing. But, uh, you know, things have not uh, turned around the way they had hoped after winning a couple series. So, you know, Garrett Crochet's back. We'll get into that a little bit, I'm sure. Uh, Liam will be on his way back shortly. <laughs> Would like to see uh, a full, healthy roster. And maybe, just maybe, we can get that spark we've been looking for. But, man, I don't know. I don't know. How are you doing, man? I'm doing all right, you know. Um, yeah, uh, as far as the White Sox go, I mean, uh, they won two series in a row, and then they go and lose three out of four to Kansas City and then lose two out of three to the Astros. Uh, had the day off yesterday. They got uh, Yoan and Berger back, and, um, you know, I mean, surprisingly enough, they look like a baseball team tonight. Um, but, I mean, it, you know, the – the way the White Sox are, you know, we have no idea whether this is just going to be a one night thing or, you know, whether they're going <clears> to, <throat> you know, play some baseball. I don't know. I mean, I can hope that they're going to play baseball, but at this point, um, I think, bef uh, you know, going into tonight, tonight, I believe they, yeah, they're 14 and 28 going into tonight. So they're 14 games below, uh, or yeah, I, how many, uh, yeah, 14 yeah. games. 14 games below 500. Yeah, I mean, that's just, eesh, man, it's just, it's brutal. This is some of the worst baseball I've ever seen in my life. Man, we thought it was bad the last two years because this team was supposed to be, you know, competitive. They weren't supposed to be a team that was in the height of its competitive window. You know, after uh, watching Ricky Renteria take them to the playoffs for the first time since 2008 in 2020. And, uh, you know, we thought, well, 2020 was a, you know, a, a COVID shortened season and good things were to come, right? And then the TLR hire happened and uh, we all kind of shook our heads at that. And you just knew that things were not quite as they were supposed to be. But we had hope. We remained hopeful. We said, you know what? Maybe TLR can't screw this thing up enough with the <laughs> roster that they have, right? Negative, he, sir. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work out that way. So now we yeah. get Pedro Grafal, and we hear all these changes in philosophy and you know, there's there's new ancillary hires and, and new hires from outside the organization and things got shuffled and we were like, OK, here we go. You know, we're now getting to the part of the window that maybe things are starting to kind of shift in a different direction because guys contracts are going to be coming up here. This is our year. Things are going to happen. They have to. Oh, Boy, no, we're well, you, I mean, you're not wrong there. Things they have to because if you know, I mean, with the way that they've come out, I mean, if this continues, uh, they tonight they start to, started a four series divisional run here, and if they don't seriously take these teams out behind the woodshed in the neck in the next week and a half, um. Two oh, yeah. weeks, See, it's over. Cancel you know? the post game. It, this is it. You know, it, we're at the, the brink of being over already as it is. But like you say, with this divisional rivalry that we're going to be looking at the next couple of weeks here, uh, you know, if, if it doesn't happen now, it's not going to happen. You can forget it. You're going to be – we're not even talking about mired in mediocrity anymore. We're, we're talking about being basement dwellers. Mm. You're, you're already, you know, what is it, a 30, 333 winning average, winning percentage, uh, mm. you know, 14 and 28, you're 14 games below, You just to get back to 500, you know, and 500 was not the goal this year. <laughs> no, it was not. You know, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see how things go over the next week and a half. 
my optimism is waning. It is not completely gone. You know, I, I, we've seen teams go on some crazy runs in the past. Maybe the White Sox can do that, but my goodness, man, is this difficult to watch? <laughs> it really is. It really is. You know, and you know, we we came into this season with optimism, you know, and despite the fact that we knew that there was some holes in the roster and that there was still roster work to be done, we still came into it with some optimism and um you know, I don't know. It's just it's it's even worse than it was last year and I, like I didn't think that it could get worse than it was last year, you know? And um it's a difficult thing to do. <laughs> it really is. I uh, you know, there was I mean, the, the chance started before the all-star break for, you know, firings of coaches, you know, TLR specifically, uh, the sell the team chance have been around for way too long at this point now. And we're watching a broken record of guys who are, are, are basically on the merry-go-round on the, on the IL, you know, and it's the same four or five guys that just keep making trips to the IL. And, you know, we talk about roster construction over and over and over again. And if we get the core group of guys that can stay healthy and stay out there and, and, and play together, maybe, maybe this team will do something, but we haven't seen enough of that yet. And honestly, it doesn't feel like we're going to. So, you know, fingers crossed, who knows, but my, it's just, I, I'm, I'm finding it difficult to remain optimistic. And I'm going to. I'm I'm not going to jump off that ledge just yet, but I'm getting really close. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, if if things don't change in the next, uh, you know, week and a half and they don't go on a serious run here, they're, they're done. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. Um, but um, that brings me to our next topic here. Um, if it doesn't change, that puts you in a, a pretty ugly spot because we are going to more than likely look to be sellers here going into the trade deadline. And um, You would think, but, uh, you know, I'm not so sure that, uh, you know, the fans are calling for that kind of thing. Well, I'm I mean, not so sure the organization is going to see it that way. We have the king of the retool as our, you know, president of baseball operations. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, here so here's here's something to think about is that when we went into the full-fledged rebuild last time and tore it down to the studs, they had guys that were controllable and were solid performers year in, year out. If they're going to go and do something like that now, who who are they trading? Who who is who has multi year control and has been a consistent performer? that you are going to trade to get these pieces. You've got one year, uh, basically you got a year and uh, what, two months of Tim Anderson to deal if you, if you go with the trade deadline. You've got half a year of Giolito. Uh, you've got a year and a few months of Lance Lynn. Uh, you got some Joe Kelly in there. Uh, I can't remember. I think he's got another year on his contract, if I remember correctly. Um, but nobody's taking Yohan Moncada's contract, you know, because I think he's making twenty four million next year, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and, and then he, you've and got he two can't options. Stay off years. the IL. Yeah, and he can't stay off the IL. Uh, Eloy, uh, consistently, you know, and like obviously you can't blame appendicite, you know, uh, an appendectomy on the training staff. You can't blame it on his you know, on, on him or, you know, like 
poor conditioning or whatever. But, no, but you can sure blame diving into nets and hanging off of outfield walls in preseason games, uh, you know, on pure stupidity. No, yeah, I, yeah, but I mean, you know, still, you can't blame the appendectomy on poor no. training, you know, like, and, and, you know, say he comes back and he is the model of, of, uh, of good health, you know, for the rest of the season. I mean, he's still, gonna be at the point where he's am gonna I, have... am i watching a, a a 108 commercial right now yeah yeah that's for the uh the track jacket uh giveaway no kidding yeah good for them yeah they uh i think they shot that like a week and a half or two weeks ago or something I, like that. i did see the pictures uh on twitter yeah but uh to see beef and cherizy <laughs> and my sock summer out there my sock summer strutting it up that was uh that was cool. Uh, very interesting. It's the first time I've seen that. It, I, is this the first time it's aired tonight? Uh, it might be. Um, I don't remember having seen it, but then again, I generally don't watch commercials a whole lot. <laughs> um, so I got gotcha. you. Yeah, so I mean, just because it's, it's on right now next to me, I saw it. Uh, otherwise, I might have been, you know, like up and walking around uh, cursing at the TV and whatever during most of the other games that have happened in the last week perfect so, time to go get a sausage yeah sausage and another uh, adult sparkling beverage if you will get away from the tv and the baseball that hurts my eyes and my brain <laughs> um oh lord so uh true words have never been spoken <laughs> yeah so uh to bring up the um the crochet thing. So you mentioned that he's on his way back uh, and that they called him back today. Um, he looked halfway decent uh, in his limited, uh, you know, rehabs, rehab stint. Um, pitched okay in Birmingham, pitched okay in Charlotte. Um, you know, things that we worry about you know, that we've talked about is, you know, his, his velocity. He did get up to like 98, 99. So we haven't seen that top, top end that we used to see, you know, like the 102, 103 type stuff. We haven't seen that. Um, so I don't know, uh, as far as the, the velo goes, I don't know it's if it's that he can't do that anymore or that, you know, he's just ramping it up or whatever. Um, I mean, you know, it could be that he's changed his philosophy and he's trying to, uh, you know, start at 98 and end at 98. And, you know, I have heard that they're trying to stretch him out to multiple innings, um, possibly to move him to uh, back to starting. a role as a starter, especially considering what this starting rotation is going to look like next year because you know they're not paying Giolito. And... um I, you know, Lance Lynn's looked pretty decent his last, you know, I mean, he's had, he's had starts that have looked pretty decent. Um, you know, it's just, it's been more of a thing of him not being able to go deep into games and, you know, giving up like five runs in five innings. And I'll know? be honest with you. He, he looked really solid tonight. Uh, one of, it may, one of his best starts of the season tonight. So, yeah, you no, know, for sure. I, uh, I, you know, I'm hopeful that maybe he's kind of figuring some things out, you know. But the thing with Crochet, and, and we've talked about this before, is, you know, if he's at 98, 97, 98, you know, it pretty much average speed is going to be between 96 and 98. He's got to find some movement on that fastball. And I have noticed in some of the clips that I've seen that there is a slight tail all of a sudden. Yeah, which, I think he's you know healthy. You know, like we've 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 talked about this before that you know when a guy's ramping up to a point where he's gonna need TJ for whatever reason that fastball just flattens out. Yeah, it sure does. And it sure does. It looks like it it does have some life on it again, and it does have some movement, and the slider is still nasty um you know i don't know we'll see we'll see how it translates you know i mean it was pretty decent in like i said it was decent in the rehab stints 
Um, what I will mention uh, also uh, that you had mentioned that Liam would be back soon. Um, so they're supposed to reevaluate him on Thursday, apparently, to uh, to to you know figure out when he's going to come back. And um, I want to say that the last three outings he's had, he's given up a home run. He gave up another one tonight um, to dead center well, field, like four four ten something like that. That's not outside of the norm for Liam no. Hendricks. If you go back and you yeah. look at his career, he's actually given up some dingers over the course of his career, not just with the White Sox. It started back when he was with in Oakland. Uh, he's been known to give up a dinger or two. He, he you know, when you chuck it the way he does, and again, he's another one where sometimes the fastball flattens out. And he he you know he relies on his his uh, breaking stuff to uh, be the out pitch, but he at times can have a slightly flat four seamer, and uh, you know it happens. He tries to throw it by guys. He does more often than not, but every now and again, he's going to give up a dinger when you're throwing some heat. Guys are going to that, put on fair. that. That's I, I'm not. I'm not going to disagree with that. Um, I'm just mentioning that the last three outings, he's given up a home run. So it's not. It's not that he's uh, you know doing it every once in a while. It's yeah, right. And right and now it is a pattern hitters as well too. So yeah, right now it is a pattern. And the velo is not, you know, it's not yeah, popping right now. You know, he's hitting like 96, which, you know, isn't terrible and too far off from where he's at. But, you know, when he's, you know, when he's really on point, he's hitting like 97, 98, you know. So, and that's fine. If they need to give him another couple of, you know, a week or two to ramp up and feel better, that's fine. I, you, you, if, I mean, for the guy to be even on a mound at this particular point in time, there were a lot of people thinking he might not pitch into well into the second half of the season, if at all this season, when it was announced that uh, he had the lymphoma and, you know, he went through some rigorous, rigorous treatments to be able to be where he's at right now. Uh, I had heard something, you know, about, uh, there was some doctor, I read in an article that said it, you know, was kind of unheard of for him to be, you know, where he was at, but, uh, apparently they were pretty aggressive in their treatment. And you got to expect that the guy that, you know, he put his body through all that stuff with all that treatment, it's going to take some time for him to get back to 100%. So, you know, I'm okay with them not rushing him. Honestly, if, if the evaluation comes back, you know, Thursday. And they say, hey, you know, we're going to give him another week and then reevaluate him again. By all means, do what you got to do. Yeah, no, they, I mean, I, I'm 100% there with you. You know, that you, you can't rush the guy back just because he's saying, I'm ready to come back. I'm ready to come back. If he's giving up, you know, home runs all over the place, then, uh, <laughs> you know, he's got to, he's got to take his time and, and get ramped up and, and really, I mean, you know, as bad as some of the White Sox bullpen has been, if that's the case with Liam and it continues to be the case with Liam for a few more outings, uh, what help really is he going to be to this team? It, it, you don't want to bring him back if he's going to be a detriment to the team or to himself. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I'm excited to know that he's on the road to coming back. When I mentioned that, it was just more of a, you know, hey, maybe we're finally going to get healthy here on the south side. Yeah. I, I, we like were going to see the roster the way it was meant to be seen. Yeah, the main issue I have here, I see a lot of social media posts that are saying, okay, we're going to get Liam and Crochet back, and then the bullpen's going to be at you know full force, and we're going to be ready to go, and you know everything's going to be good. And my thinking here is that, they might not necessarily be peak Liam and peak Garrett Crochet that you're getting right. back, you know? I mean, right. more than likely, they won't be. Right. So, you know, they might not be the thing that's going to turn things around. You know, I mean, having Liam back in the clubhouse and, you know, in the bullpen 
yeah, that's going to lift some spirits 100%. Um, Absolutely. And that might help things, you know, but at the same time, you know, like the problem that we've, you know, that we've been watching with the White Sox is just inconsistency. You know, when there's bad starting pitching, nobody hit or, uh, you know, that's when they hit. And when there's no hitting, that's when they pitch. Nor, you know, like that's the way it's been for, you know, almost, you know, going on two years now. Um, so it reminds me of like the Bears. We, you know, the Bears can, it, and I know this is a, probably a terrible comp, but it's, it just feels like those Bears teams the last few years. And I know you're a Packer fan, and I won't give you too much crap over that, but, uh, hey, man, <laughs> you know, I had a good 30 year run. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, I just feel like it's a, it's the same thing with these Bears teams where, you know, it, one game the Bears seem like they can run the ball. The next game they seem like they can pass the ball. The next game they seem like they're all defense and no offense. It, it's just the same thing with the White Sox. We cannot get everything going all at once. And it's a – I mean, we see flashes of it. It makes you believe that they're, it's in them. It's absolutely in them why it doesn't work out together on the same night consistently. I couldn't tell you, honestly, I, you know, I consider myself maybe not quite, you know, at the level of what these other guys are, you know, professionals, but I consider myself a student of the game. You know, I do a lot of reading. I'm in stats. I'm, I'm into the intangibles. You know, we can talk about the intangibles. We can talk about those things, you know, I, the traditional advanced, intangibles some guys got it i test i will talk about all that stuff I'll, I'll talk about that with anybody but uh you know you can sit here and pour over all that stuff and there isn't anything that really points to why they are so terribly inconsistent yep <clears throat> the problem is is the tangible intangibles the actual things that you can measure. Um, that's the problem is that just, there's just, you know, too much, uh, too much inconsistency. You know, they just don't, uh, they don't execute when they're supposed to execute and is what it is, man. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Let's, I guess, uh, you know, we'll reconvene here. Uh, next week and we'll see what's uh what's going on with these series that they're in right now and see if they can manage to go on a little run here uh, but you know that the yeah. the thing about that is is that you know you're looking at you know say over i think it's uh what 13 games or something like that if they go eight and five that's not good enough that's not gonna that's not gonna move the needle you know and that's that's where you know they have painted themselves so far into the corner here that if you know they don't go on like a what like a 12 and 1 or something like that well that's the thing because at 8 and 5 8 and 5 sounds fantastic in a in a in a small window yeah but uh the reality is is 8 and 5 still leaves them 11 games under 500 11 mm. You're th here we are thinking, yeah, well, eight and five, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good run. Well, if, it, it were, if that is what they did consistently from the start of the season, they'd be one of the best teams in baseball. Well, you know, I mean, what I, I realistically, uh, I think it's uh, the first couple of games against the Angels, I think, uh, you hit Memorial Day. And that's when we we said that we were going to uh, really evaluate that we'd know where we were where we are. And the problem with that now is that say that they do go on, you know, like a From ten or eleven, ten and three games. or what, yeah, you know, like whatever, <laughs> you know. Say they go on that and they get close to five hundred again, we're going to be the in the exact same boat that we were a month ago, saying where is this team? Like, what is this team? Yeah, you can't really, you still cannot really judge. 
Now, now granted, granted they, they did, did go on. If let's say if they win ten or eleven out of the next fifteen, you know, yeah, you, you feel pretty good about that, and you think, okay, well maybe if they can consistently kind of go on these runs, they can be back in the thick of things. Yes, the, you know the the central, the AL Central is it's hot garbage. Let's just be honest; it's the worst division in baseball, but it's still attainable if you have one of those you know, types of runs. But it doesn't make me feel any better about the playoffs. I'm going to need to see that kind of run consistently. Now, are we moving that needle? We Are we moving that that mark back where we, you know, we use Memorial Day as a, as a kind of a jump off point to, you know, figure out where we are? Do we move that date back now if they go on one of those runs? Hey, Lou Bob finally got himself a hit. He was the uh, only guy on the team that did yeah, not have a hit. Yeah, what a bum this guy is. And uh, he just put, <laughs> he just put one about six, seven rows back. Yeah, 418 uh, feet, 108 miles an hour. That, this guy, man, he's just, I mean, well, I'll uh, tell for you all what, the negative stuff we've been talking about. The day after we called him dumb. Yeah. He went on a tear. So you heard it here, folks. We, we, uh, we lit a fire under Luis Robert Jr., you know, you can point at the benching by Pedro Grafal, but it was White Sox Daily Live calling him dumb. Yeah, I don't think he liked that too much. He was like, "I'll show you." Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Um, I well, have to Officer agree. Doofy, was it was it Officer Doofy? We were speculating might be somebody last last week or the week before. He might he might be. You never he know. He might be somebody. He was listening to the show. He was here live, and he went back and said, "They think you're dumb." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, Did I you, lose my camera. No, that's me. Uh-huh. I was uh, yeah. I'm sitting here goofing with something because I want to bring it up here in a in a in a hot minute. Um. Yeah, yeah. He has been. I mean, he, that guy's been out of his mind. He's had like a 1400 OPS over the last like what like three weeks or something like that. Insane. Yeah. First in batting average since the start of May. First in RBIs, tied for first, in, or I think he's tied for first in home runs, tied for first in RBIs. Although he may have surpassed that home run thing, uh, but yeah, he's he's been first in every category, all the way down every offensive category since the start of the month. So yeah, uh, you know, I I said that uh, Eloy was going to be the one who is going to uh, lead the White Sox in home runs this year, and. Uh, and that uh, I think Luis Robert was going to be like third or something like that. And uh, last year, I said that Luis Robert was going to lead the team in all categories. And it uh, looks like I was apparently off by a year for Luis there Robert. Go. So There you go. Well, I said that, you know, one of my bold predictions early in the season that the White Sox might have the best starting staff in baseball. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh, so, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and take that back right now, and hopefully uh, I'm going to use a little reverse psychology. Because you guys stink. You guys are putrid. <laughs> yeah, it's rough, You know, man. I don't know, man. I, I, I'm i trying whatever kind of voodoo I can throw out there at this particular moment that maybe we can salvage something out of this season. I don't know. You know, I love the White Sox. They're still my boys. You're still my favorite team, but you guys suck. Get it together. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are cheeks. I still love you, but you're terrible. I mean, um, I'm here for it all day long. I will support, you know, I, I may not go to as many games. Oh, that was a little plunkeroo. Right on, on the now. old, he's, he's speaking to cheeks. Right, right, right in the fanny. <laughs> poor, yeah, I got him on Andrew the old Vaughan. gluteus maximus. All right, so uh, we've uh, gone through all the negative, well, not all the negative stuff, but we went through a bunch of the negative stuff. Um, We talked about, uh, now we've talked about some positive things. Um, I want to. You you started, you you actually started to bring up, you know, where we were on uh, who do we get rid of, and we kind of got off off tangent there. I know we kind of went down the line, but. I feel like there's a couple of guys that maybe we can talk about discussion and bringing something back. No, no. Well, I mean, you know, do you, do you trust a rebuild? See, that's the tr- thing. Do you trust? Do you trust Rick Hahn to man the helm yet again? Do you trust Hostetler to? Uh, well, I guess he's really not in the same role that he was a couple of years ago. But 
Yeah, you know? well, that's the thing is he's pro player uh, personnel. You know, he's the guy who's telling you the guys who are pros, this is who you want. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, to be honest, I don't trust. I, no, I don't trust those guys at this point. And that's that's part of the problem is that if you're going to start uh, breaking it down again to get going again, I don't trust. You know, and, I, and I'll be the first to say, you know, like when those trades happened, the trades that Rick Hahn made, I like the trades. And, Absolutely. Uh, it just so happens that, you know, we've had nothing but health issues and underperformance and just, you know, bad leadership, uh, bad development. You know, I mean, I, I will say that now I feel like the development – in the minor leagues is better, but you know, that was before these guys. Right. So, you know, I just, the, the development, you know, like there's too much development going on at the major league level. And, um, you know, I don't necessarily, you know, I don't necessarily think that Rick Hahn did a bad job on the initial part of the, of the rebuild. And, you know, I also think that there's, you know, there's a bunch of, a bunch of things that went wrong that necessarily aren't his fault. You know, the hiring of, uh, of TLR, the, uh, right, you know, completely capping, out of capping of, you know, contracts that were offered to free agents, you know, um, you know, I, I think that there was a that there was a bunch of things that Rick Hahn did correctly, and there was a lot of bad luck with that stuff. Um, however, there's a lot of stuff either. that he's done bad. You know, there's a lot of stuff that he's done bad. You know, and I, you know, and well, like, and those bad things are what makes me feel like his hands are still somewhat tied when we you know at the beginning of the rebuild we were kind of led to believe that he had finally had the handcuffs taken off and you know this was his baby it was we were under the impression that you know when he took over as gm he was still kind of being coddled or you know he was being influenced by kenny and others above him including ownership and when the rebuild happened, uh, it seemed to it, it it seemed to signal that you know maybe finally Rick Hahn was you know driving the bus, and then all of a sudden things changed a little bit, and you wonder where did we go off the rails? Why did it change all of a sudden? Because I'm with you on the simple fact that a lot of it looked fantastic, and then the dumb kicked in again. The bad because the bad didn't happen until we were in the window. Yeah, I, I you know like the the thing you know we watch them colossally botch the Machado thing, and we I, I don't want to go over this again, but no. you know we're that was supposed to be a finishing piece. We were told that there was going to be finishing pieces there were never finishing pieces there was nothing no, added mean, other than liam and lance say liam. liam Hendricks was pretty much your big free agent signing it was he's the biggest free agent signing we can talk about you know ben and with the big contract this year and yeah that's not yes that's, monty grunstall getting a big contract a couple of years back now but i mean it was those were not the finishing pieces those yeah were not and, the andrew ben and is a you know, like a he he's like um clove on a ham. He's a finisher, you know? He's like a like a, a just like a an accent, you know, that you add that gives flavor, you know. He's not the he's not the meat. You know, he's no, and, he's not know, the ham. No, no. <laughs> and and again, I will not complain about having an outfield full of outfielders. I won't do that. No. But he is not the guy that you're looking to say, this is the one that's going to put us over the top. 
This is the guy that can take a game and put the team on his back and ride us into the sunset. He's not that guy. No. Never has been. Probably never will. Neither is Jake Marisnik, who just made oh, the goodness. last catch. Um, that's something that I that I would like to get into. Um, yeah, let's but do that. I want to make one more point here, and it, the thing is, I don't like throwing people under the bus. Uh, I don't either. In the organization, um, it, I think it's like a it's a it's a cop out, and it's really easy to do, you know. And you see it all over social media. Somebody saying, "Oh, this guy sucks. This guy sucks." You know, like with like if w- one thing that they don't like, somebody's terrible. But you know, like we were talking about Nick Hostetler. Yeah, he sucks. When in in the drafts, you know, the, like a lot of you know. We've got like a window of like uh, four years, five years. We got, you know, essentially we got um, Andrew Vaughn and Jake Berger out of those drafts. And I guess you could say uh, Garrett Crochet as well. Um, but, you know, it's like there, there was, there's so much, there's so many misses there. And then, then he moves over to pro player person you know pro personnel and uh you know i think that uh you know obviously he's working with rick Hahn, you know working into uh these are guys that you should pick up it's a problem you know that that is part uh, that is a, a large part of the problem has been those two aspects in specifically those time windows the draft yeah. in the in the the draft in the rebuild and the pro player personnel in the window those have been two major bad parts of the equation yeah. and there's Big one gaps. person that has been at the head of both of those parts at those specific times and like the thing is is like seems like a really nice guy but the problem is is that none like almost nothing out of those windows of time that he has spent in those two places has worked out well and that's all i want to say about it i just wanted to bring yeah, it up no, and I'm get it you. and get it out there you know i'm with you uh and i feel like you know maybe mike shirley seems you know and we thought highly of nick hostetler early on we we spoke very well of him early on when uh he was you know doing the scouting and the drafts and and those things but uh you know we were wrong it happens you know we're two guys sitting behind computers talking about what we see and what we think that is true i suppose We're, we're human uh but at the same time i think we're both pretty fond of uh mike shirley at the moment and what mike shirley's doing so i mean i would you know i'm not saying he's the be all end all but uh so far so far i feel pretty good about the direction things have gone now all of that remains to be seen you know we might need a two or three or four year window like we did with nick hostetler to see where that leads us but you know as of right now I, 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 again, I'm going to use this. I hate to do it. I hate to sound like a broken record, but I'm going to use this words. I'm cautiously optimistic. And I kind of want to get your opinion on that. Where do you, yeah, how well, do you feel like Shirley and, and what he's done in his role so far? So far, the drafts have looked really good, but you know, I mean, you know, I will we'll see, we'll see in a few years. I mean, we're like, uh, we're like a couple of years into it here. You know, we'll, we'll see, uh, Right in the eyeball. Um, yep. We'll see. You know, we'll see how it uh, how it goes. You know, in the upcoming years. Because I mean, right now uh, we've got uh, Colson Montgomery hasn't played yet this year. Uh, Noah Schultz has been pitching in Arizona, but we haven't seen him yet outside of Arizona. And that's like two of the top guys in the farm system. 
Uh, you know, Ramos, same thing, hasn't played yet this year other than spring training. So, um, you know, I would also like to add the, cave- the, the, the caveat, you know, for Nick Hostetler here. The same caveat that I'm going to give that, that I gave Rick Hahn. Ultimately, when you have all of these cooks in the kitchen, you've got Jerry, you've got Kenny, you've got Rick in there as well. And it could be that, you know, Nick's suggesting things and that they're not taking those suggestions could be that, you know, when he was doing the draft that he wanted certain guys, you know, on the outside, of course, he has to say, oh, yeah, that was my guy. Oh, yeah, I love that guy when they drafted Zach Collins. And that's who these other guys, you know, like say that that's who Rick Hahn and, you know, say that's who Kenny and Jerry wanted was Zach Collins and Rick Hahn and Nick Hostetler wanted somebody else. You know, yeah, it's, I, it's I don't know, possible. you know, like that's that's the thing is that like I can see her and point at that, you know, like I'm just making like a observation at these two specific things at the at those times. I just I just want to make know, that caveat that we may never know unless yeah. one of those guys gets, you know, upset and, you know, pulls a uh, uh, a blackjack McDowell and spills the beans, you know, 20 years down the line. We might not ever know if, you know, if that was the case, but. God, I hope you know if if you're right. I would hope that that does at least make its way out at some point. Chances I mean, are it's slim to none, but you know, it would just it would just be nice to know if our prognostications, if our 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 inklings of ideas are anywhere near some form of truth. You know what I mean? And yeah. We're sitting here trying to figure this thing out, and it's just not figurable at the moment. Yeah, like you, it's not figurable. You literally, you literally have to be in the organization to know what's going on in the organization. Because I, dude, it's like a Rubik's cube, and somebody pulled the stickers off of and rearranged them, and there's just no real way to solve it. Because that's what it feels like right now. Yeah, you have to be like one of one of a dozen people to know what's actually going on. And even there, you probably have to be one of four people to actually know what's going on with w- what goes in o- goes on in those offices. And you know, we're not. Uh, you know, it's all just conjecture. You know, but uh, that's why we're here. Yeah, got to get it off our chest and uh, and talk about it. Um, Till we're blue in the stinking face. Clearly, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to come in with the blue man group. <laughs> <laughs> make up next week. Did I tell you that we went to uh, me and I took uh I took old Rudels and yes, to see the... they did win a game. Oh, we got the uh... um, chatters. Look at that. Yes, they chatters. did win a game. How do you like that? Um yeah, I took uh I took old Rudels to uh go see uh Blue Man Group downtown. Uh my buddy Mike's the drummer for the uh the live band there. Yeah, we talked about that. How did that go? How did that work? Oh, out? Was, yeah, we had a blast. We had a blast. Yeah, he's up in the uh, in the cage off yeah. uh, above the stage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty good cool. for him. Yeah, it was a fun time. Um, yeah, Blue Man Group is a good time. It really is. Um, it is so, a good time. I actually last time the wife and I went probably I don't know four or five years ago now, and uh, one of the guys I was sitting on an end seat had myself a a, a libation. And uh, one of the guys came down and looked at it, looked at me and looked at it, and I handed it to him. I thought he was going to take a swig, but he did not. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, you know, it's it's always fun, would've especially ha- those little unscripted things they do, you know? Yeah. It's... Yeah, you would have had some nice marshmallow residue all over your bottle probably. Ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> um, So I wanted to bring up. Before COVID, I wasn't scared of anything. <laughs> yeah, well, true. Um, I wanted to bring up uh, a couple of things here, uh, just in, in Major League news. Um, and this is I, – I don't know if you have seen this report or not, but it's been 43 days since Angel Hernandez has worked in a baseball game. I, I heard something about this, but I have not read any you know full story on that. Yeah, they have not said whether, you know, he has not said uh, anybody has not made any light of the situation that, you know, whether he's retired or he got let go or whatever. Um, 
but he hasn't been around in 43 days, and I can't say that I'm upset about that. It's, I mean, he's had some pretty. Yeah, pretty it's, it's been a rough times. go with with him. Uh anywhere on a diamond, honestly, whether it's behind the plate or one of the on field positions, he's just uh. Well, cheeks is a uh, is a really good word for him. Cause, yeah, guy's awful. You know, I remember the you know we all probably remember the the uh, the lawsuit about not getting uh, playoff games and discrimination, blah 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 blah. Uh, but you know that didn't go the way he had hoped. <laughs> no, and it did not. It kind of makes you wonder if maybe he just decided well. That didn't work out, so I'm just going to take a break, maybe yeah, if, forever. Yeah, I mean, the guy's made plenty of money off of doing that for a living for years, so I can't see that, uh, you know, that he really needs to at this point. Um, well, maybe he get a job in, in the White Sox organization because apparently they uh, they like to keep people who are bad at that job or, you know, their job's around for a long time. Pretty sure uh, – there's a spot somewhere for Angel. <laughs> um, so the other thing I wanted to bring up, uh, did you happen to catch what was going on in the Yankees-Blue Jays game? I did not. With Aaron Judge. I did not. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring that up. I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, okay, I want you, I want you to – okay, so – you know, we've we've had our, our conversations about the uh, the magic baseballs with the Yankees last year. Oh, yeah. And there's you know, there's been all sorts of talk about the about the Yankees and things that they do uh, that people don't like. Um, I did hear something about a pitcher getting tossed. What, yeah, I want to bring that up as well. But this this happened. Uh, this happened yesterday. I believe. Uh, okay. Yeah, yesterday. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring this thing up here. And they explain the whole thing uh, in this video clip, so I'll just go ahead and let the, the whole thing play. I have audio. A long hold here by Jackson. Indeed. And it's two and two. All right, Buck. So you and I looked at each other at the same moment, right when we saw this yeah. three pitches ago. Watch what he's looking at. Yeah. What is that? Where is he looking? Where is he looking? And he did and it more than once. Out. Yeah. yeah. It's really, really unusual. But you and I both looked at each other when yeah. we saw that. Like, like did you see what I saw? Yeah. And you don't want to go, you know, throwing allegations around without knowing, but now. Nah. And then you know what? He, yeah, I, I have had this guy's, guy's voice. Holy cow! When I was catching, and, and you obviously could see it, and he he couldn't see the catcher with the way he yeah. was looking right there. Yeah, just did it again. And he pummeled it. He hit it a country mile for his second wow. home run of the night. Third time this season, and Aaron Judge is at two homers in a game. And once again, he's looking at something. And then the next move is that powerful swing, and he blasts one to center field. I've not seen that before with him. No. I've not ever no. seen that. And we've both seen it was, him yeah, it was, a lot. Do you I mean, think he's trying to see if he can see Kirk, if Kirk's away? Yeah, I, you I know, don't it's know. more likely to be a slider if Kirk's in and he can't see him. It's more likely to be a fastball. But the way his head was, I don't know that he could see the catcher just looking like. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just kind. Of, it's it's one of those things that's kind of suspect. You know, well, I mean, and I mean, he did it. It looked like almost every pitch during that sequence. Now his I mean they showed it they showed the close up of his face and his eyes going in that direction twice. 
But then they said he just did it again, even when they didn't have the close up on it. They were like, "Hi, ah, he just did it again." And lo and behold, he pretty much shouldered the bat for that breaking ball that came in when they they mentioned it. Like he didn't even look like he was going to be getting ready to swing. Yeah, That's, so uh, I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not like they said, I'm not going to make any accusations without knowing, but there's definitely something a little suspect about it's what's kind of weird, on. right? Uh, so he yeah. says uh, he was glancing at his teammates because they were shouting at the umpire while holding a six nothing lead, and he said, "I'm kind of looking like who's still talking here? Let's go back to playing ball." Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. In between every pitch, while you have the bat in your hand and your focus should be on the batter or the pitcher, pardon me. That's when you're looking over to dugout, not between pitches. When you step out and hit the, you know, you're, you're knocking the, the dirt off of your cleats. Yeah, exactly. In you're doing pitches. it while you're set. And while he's getting ready to throw the pitch, you're looking over. Yeah, there I don't then. buy that crap yeah, at all. Complete, complete and total garbage. And that just makes it even more suspect that you are now throwing out some BS that is quite obviously BS. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. Uh, that to me uh, just, uh, you know, that goes back to Little League when you're taught to not break your focus on the pitcher when he's in his windup or starting his delivery. Give me a break. Something isn't right there. It's definitely weird. All right, so then we'll go to uh, what happened to, uh, tonight uh, with the uh, Domingo Herman uh, ejection. I've got that as well, and I'll go ahead and bring that up. And it's, you know, just another... Another feather, another feather in their in their cap, you know. Um, go ahead and no, you bring know, that up. Class act over there. Yeah. Game. They checked his hand. All four umpires now talking with Aaron Boone and Herman, who's been perfect through three, was just thrown out of the game for obviously something on his hand that they did not think was uh, was allowable. When he was coming out of the dugout, he was stopped by an umpire to check going into the game. Usually it's going out of the game. And they checked. All four umpires came and checked. And they ended up throwing him out. Checking his hand, checking the glove. They've already got his glove. You can see it right there. There's trouble brewing. Now they're going to consult and make a collective decision. Problem is, it's sort of like getting audited by the IRS. Once they're op once they open your file, they're going to keep checking you, and that's what Domingo Armand has already had one issue that's been well publicized. So that's why they checked him coming out from the dugout because there's a history here. <laughs> but this has ramifications, David, because as with Max Scherzer, you get thrown out of the game, you are then suspended for the next ten. So as you, I, they kind of. Um. I saw like uh, I saw a picture there on his uh, on his um, pants, like right underneath his belt here. There's like a brown stain. Oh, yeah, and, there's a little dirty spot there. Yeah. And, you know, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, who knows? Um, but yeah, here, something to keep an eye on. Here's something that was entertaining also <laughs> from from the same game. Uh, I'll go ahead and bring this up just because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's his fastball. So those two pitches. Now they're yelling at Luis Rojas. He's too far out of the the third baseline. And now the first base coach, DJ Rayburn, is getting involved. And you can see, I think it was Pete Walker walked to the outfield side of the dugout and told Rojas to get back. <laughs> shut up, Sam. And now it looks like Snyder is telling <laughs> Boone to shut up. This is gamesmanship from the manager. Now, the Yankee side is arguing exactly what you said before in the previous inning when the Blue Jays third base coach was deep and out of the coach's box when <laughs> Vladimir Guerrero Jr. was hitting. So that's what they're discussing right there. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what possibly... What what kind of advantage could a coach get from being deep? 
on the third base side. I don't know. It's your, although, I don't know. I, I don't know. Grimtel's asking you if you're going to watch Cars Tour tomorrow at Wilkesboro. Uh, you know what? We uh, we'll see. I I got a lot going on this week, but uh, I yeah I know what he's talking about. Uh, you know it's a racing thing. But uh, I will uh, try to tune in. If not, it will be DVR'd. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's that's about all I had. I, I just wanted to bring up those uh, those fun things for the uh, you know. No, the, interesting the indeed. At, at the least. Uh, you know, I'm, I'll be, we'll be keeping an eye on, on both of those things. Cause, uh, you know, I, you gotta wonder that if, if judge was doing something nefarious and again, just like the announcer said on the game, you know, I'm not going to make any speculation on what was actually happening there. Uh, you know, suspect as it may seem. Oh, I will. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> I, I will, I will internally, I'm not going to say it out loud. Yeah, I don't but, have any uh, problem saying it out loud. He's probably cheating. <laughs> he's he's on the Yankees. He's probably cheating. But uh, you know, the the question now is will he continue to do it after being called on it? Or does he find another way to cheat? As you know, there's the old saying, if you're if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. You ain't trying, uh, that's right. You know, Guys have been stealing signs from second base for forever and a day, and it's not it's it's considered poor gamesmanship, but it's not considered cheating. No. Yeah, but if they're doing if they're doing the uh, pitch you know, the pitch com, that's a whole there's, other there's issue. No, yeah, there's no there's no signs to steal. So, yeah, right. the the only thing I could say is that maybe if you know, like they can see from like at what angle they're looking at, that maybe they can see what he's doing on his pitch com, that maybe. They might have an idea. I, I don't know. You know, maybe they've yeah. uh, maybe maybe they've hired uh, elite hackers that are stealing the uh, the the you know radio frequency from the pitch com. You know, I have no idea. But yeah, you, I you honestly never don't know. either. You never know. Uh, it's it's all quite possible. And unfortunately, the day and age of technology, technology is not infallible. Uh, you know. So we'll see how that goes. And then the Domingo Herman thing is also something you want to keep an eye on because they talked about in that clip that he's already had an incident that was highly uh, publicized. And for those of you who are listening or watching on the stream right now, don't remember Domingo Herman was asked a few weeks back to uh, wash his hands between innings. And he went and washed his hands. I believe it was with alcohol. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And the alcohol reacts with the rosin in the bag and actually makes it even stickier <laughs> so you know uh, he was then asked to leave the game uh and i believe this is in the third inning now and i think that last time was in the fourth inning so this is two two uh two times now that he's been uh removed from a game i often start, wash my so. hands with alcohol yeah often. yeah right so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but, you know, guys are looking for loopholes, and uh, baseball has made it a point to uh, put its foot down. So, you know, be interesting to see where all this stuff goes. Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, it, it will be to see interesting where everything goes because, um, you know, before, uh, you know, next stream comes up, we're going to have a couple series under our belts from the White Sox and see what they do over the next uh, over the next week. I will say that they did look a heck of a lot more loose uh, tonight. And uh, yeah, they look like they came out ready to play. They yeah. really did. They, they just had a, a they had that swag that, you know, people talk about that has been kind of missing. So, you know, hopefully that continues. Yeah, I mean it's great to have that swag when you're 14 games under 500 and hey, you know whatever it takes to get you going again. I guess, but I mean at this point, is it going to you know they they have to be unbelievably great for the rest of the season to you know for anybody to take them seriously at all? So we'll see what happens. Well, I mean you know Yo Yo came out and had a good game coming back. Uh, you know he started off the season hot and. 
you know, then had some, ran into some issues, but, you know, it, it had been talked about the back being uh, one of those things where it's a possibility that it could be an ongoing issue. You hope that he falls in that uh, 80% that doesn't need any kind of surgery and that his career isn't over and then maybe, you know, they figured out finally exactly what's going on with him and they got the, you know, the treatment to keep him rolling. And if that's the case, you know, he might have been the spark that has been we've been looking for. You know, Tim Anderson comes back. Yohan comes back. Jake Berger is still a dude. Jake Berger things. Luis Roberts, absolutely on fire. Four straight games with a dinger. He's up to 12 on the season right now. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, getting a couple of these pen pitchers back turns things around. Uh, yeah. Again, I'm not ready to throw in the towel. But, man, they got a hill and a hole to climb yep. out of. Yep. Yeah, I mean, uh, also, you know, positive things happening. Uh, Eloy was cleared for running bases today, and he's supposed to get cleared for swinging the bat here pretty soon. So we might see him well, back out there, you know, within a. The one thing we didn't talk about with, with Eloy and the appendectomy is, you know, Romy Gonzalez went through the same thing last year, and he was not the same player afterwards. So yep. uh, I am not going to fault Eloy if he comes out slow. Uh, it just is what it is. It's a, it's a, just a bad run of luck. Yep. Yep. It's so. a, yeah. It's a few years of that now. Um, right. yeah. At daily white Sox on Twitter, uh, white Sox daily dot substack dot com for, uh, written content. And, uh, you can find this podcast there afterwards, uh, anywhere else you find your podcasts. Um, yeah. At I Eskridge on Twitter. Uh, at Danny Miller WSD on Twitter. Um, we have Facebook group, and we also have a YouTube channel. Um, this stream will be put up on YouTube afterwards. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week, and uh, hopefully we'll have something positive to talk about as far as the uh, standing of this club and their and their performance. And uh, Here's the hoping. Here's hoping. <laughs> All right, my name is Ian Eskridge. For my co-host, the Danny Miller. You guys have a great night, and we will see you guys next week. Thanks. Have a good night.